Hi everybody, it's Jeff. Uh, this is part five of the Canadian Armored Machine Gun Carrier by uh, Copper State Models. I've, I've up to a, I've got quite a bit done. It doesn't look like a lot, but um, I've clear coated it and I've chipped it, and I've done a little dry brushing on some of the raised spots, and uh, then I've done the oil dot filters. Okay, right now it's actually got a lot of oil on it and I'm waiting for that to dry before I do some more weathering and a little mud and stuff and then it'll be done. Okay, so let me put that aside here where I can keep it nice and clean. I spent uh, a lot of time this week playing with these. I bought, uh, one of my subscribers bought me six of these and then I went and bought 15 more. So I've got quite a few of them here. They actually make another, I think another 18 or 19. So they think they make a total of 40 different colors. Okay, so got a lot to learn, but it's going to be fun. Okay, let's go ahead and get into the video. Um, I was busy all week, but it doesn't, I don't feel like I accomplished a whole lot. But uh, let's take a look. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, I've clear coated everything. I should have had gloves on. I forgot. But um, it's ready for uh, the decals now. There's only a few decals on this. A couple on the front and a couple on the back. So it's not a real difficult thing to do. I've got a uh, micro paintbrush I use to kind of help position things. I always put a little bit of water on the surface just to kind of give the decal something to float on. And then once I get it on there, I'll roll out the uh, the extra water with a Q-tip. And when I get everything done, sometimes I'll come back with just a little bit of Mark Fit Strong on the decal. Uh, you don't want to get carried away putting that Mark Fit on Vallejo paints because it will soften it. Sorry, I'm off screen there a little bit. But these decals didn't take long. They're cartographed. They went down very, very nice. Okay. I'm not sure just why this seems a little bit dark, but I bought some uh, 0.6 lead wire to use for the cooling lines for the machine guns. And I thought about paying them, but um, I was sure the paint would probably just chip right off. So my thought was to use a Sharpie and just uh, color them. The Sharpie will rub off if you're not careful, but that's an easy way to color it and you know it's not going to be handled once it's in place but it get re gets rid of the uh, metallic color you know so that's how I got that ready and I'll show you some pictures in a bit of how it all turned out but it doesn't take very much to to uh, go over it just make sure that you cover everything then I'll, I'll cut, them, cut this in half. It's more than long enough. But cut it in half and then uh, glue a piece into the uh, ends of each machine gun. And then I'll trim them to length uh, once I put the machine guns in place on the bottle.
Yeah, I'm going to do just a little bit of sponge chipping. What I did was I tore off a real small piece of uh, kitchen sponge and I clamped it in my hemostats. I'm using the uh, Vallejo Surface Primer 74605 German Red Brown uh, to uh, illustrate or imitate rust. Just get a little on the sponge and dab most of it off and then go over any place where you'd think there would be rust. This vehicle does have some uh, wooden parts which would not be rusted, but uh, I probably got a little carried away and put some rust on those too. But I'm sorry it's so dark. I need to look into some better lighting, I guess. Just very gently, just a tiny little bit of paint along the lower edges and any place there's like a, a sharp edge where uh, you know the paint would chip off. It's pretty simple to do. If the sponge gets kind of loaded up with paint just uh, tear off a new piece and keep going. The effects is, it's subtle but uh, when it's all done you'll you'll be able to see it. Okay, I'm going to do a little chipping now. I'm going to use white, uh, brown, and yellow uh, for the green on this model. And I have a palette there with just a little bit of uh, the odorless thinners. Well, oil is really forgiving. You can add it and you know take it off and play with it all day long if you want to, till you get it the way you want it. Uh, one thing I learned right off the bat, trying to get the proportions right. Um, basically what you do is you put dots of paint on the parts that you want to uh, weather. And depending on how many dots of what color, you can vary the color. So with green I want a little bit of yellow, a little white, and a little brown, but you can put you know, more yellow spots and fewer brown spots or more white and fewer of the others and you can vary your colors quite a bit. And of course the first time doing this I put way too much on. Just learning how to do it. And these, these oil brushes will last forever. You don't put very much on a model. But I'm putting, as you can see I'm putting the yellow on there now. And that's way, way more than I need. But I'll learn as time goes by. Got to make sure you shake them up too. The advantages of these over buying regular tube uh, oils is that the regular oils were not really made for modeling and they contain a lot of linseed oil. And uh, what you really need to do is you need to put some some of the oils from the tube on a piece of cardboard and let the oils, uh, the linseed oil, leach out of it before you use it. And uh, then you can use odorless thinners or something to get the consistency you want. But these are designed for models, so they're thin to the proper uh, consistency already. It just saves you a step. And the packaging is really convenient. It's clean, you know, easy to apply. See, I'm putting way too much on. I, I learned real quick that uh, it doesn't take much to go a long, long ways. But you get them all on there. And I've got some brushes that one of my, the same pay, uh, same uh, subscriber that bought me the uh, initial scent of uh, oil brushes, bought me some really nice brushes. And thank you very much for doing that. But you just start working it. Uh, on vertical services, you want to go go down, just keep pulling the oils down, it would be basically in the direction that uh, you know rain would fall on it. And I've got way too much oil on there, but that's okay because you can take it off and you can add to it. So it's, it's not difficult, it's just uh, a new skill needs to be learned.
you can go up and down and then pull it back down and you can see I've got a lot of pain on there once you get what you kind of think is about right then you can take a big brush a large wide brush and uh, go over it and it kind of all uh, evens things out it's very interesting and I plan on doing a lot more with oils it's just a matter of spending some time um, and learning just exactly how to do it and learning what colors um, work best for what paint I've watched a lot of you know a lot of channels um, one of them that really inspired me to try this was Rob at, at Rims Models uh, go check his channel out if you get a chance he does an amazing job with his weathering and uh, he uses oils uh, I'll put a link to his channel in the description and you can go see what he's doing. It's very interesting. You can use a little odorless thinner if you need to, you know, dab it off, work it down, but it makes for a really, really nice uh, weathering effect once you get it just right. Okay, here you can see the difference. The right side has the oils on it, and the left side does not. Okay, it's subtle. Uh, you can see it better in person, but uh, I did chip both sides. You can see the chipping on there, but um, the right side with the oils on it looks a lot more weathered. I like the effect. It's just a matter of taking the time to do it. So I, I did it all over. I can show you. Here's a little bit more of doing the uh, the front. Once again, I'm, I'm going to have to look into my lighting. I don't know why it's so dark. But uh, just blending the colors, blending them to get the consistency I want. If it's uh, you know, not, not to your liking, you can uh, use the thinners and just take it right off. Or you can add. It doesn't matter. It's very, very easy to work with. And once you get it to about what you want, just take a large brush and uh, go over it a few times and it'll kind of uh, consolidate it, I guess you'd say. Bring it all together. Okay, I'll put a few pictures at the end, but that's probably going to be about it. Alrighty, guys. Uh, that's probably going to do it for this week. Um, I was really busy, but I don't feel like I got a lot done. Anyway, um, I'll put some pictures at the end. I hope you like this. I really appreciate you watching. Uh, bought another kit. 
and I'll be doing a kit review. I've got another World War I tank. This time it's going to be a British tank. Okay, so we'll be reviewing this real soon and building it once I get a few things caught up. Okay, talk to you later. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.